Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a vinyl wrap tumbler and we're going to be adding rhinestones to the bottom. I'm going to be using this vinyl pattern that was designed by my friend Tana with Simply Snow Designs. Got it from Peachy Olive Glitters. I will link it down in the description box. And I'm using a 20 ounce skinny straight tumbler from Craft Haven that I've already sanded to prep and cleaned with rubbing alcohol and some paper towels. Here what I'm doing is I'm trying to trim down any excess vinyl that I won't need to wrap this tumbler while still giving myself about an inch or so of wiggle room on the top and bottom in case I mess up. <laughs> After I've trimmed up my excess vinyl, I'm going to start on wrapping my tumbler by peeling back about an inch of the paper backing, exposing about an inch or so of that patterned vinyl. I'm going to hold that straight against the side of the cup as straight as possible. And using that little inch of adhesive vinyl as an anchor, I'm going to also grab my wide squeegee from the Bowen. I will link their shop down below. They also make my cup turners. And you're just gonna run that squeegee from the felt side back and forth against your vinyl, using that to push back the paper backing as you're applying the vinyl to the cup. Once you get to the end, you're going to have a little bit of an overlap and I like to use a piece of masking tape to line against where I'm going to trim the excess and I place that tape line just over the seam so that again I have about an eighth of an inch of an overlap at the seam. And then I'll just use a sharp craft knife to cut along the line that I've created with my masking tape. Next, I'm going to trim the excess vinyl from the top and bottom of our tumbler using my edge trimmer. I go up two rungs from the bottom for the bottom of the tumbler trim, and then I go one rung up from the bottom for the top. So I'll have a thinner line of stainless steel up around the top rim than I will at the bottom. At this point, we should have something that looks like this. Next, I want to line out where my rhinestones will be around the bottom and where just the epoxy tumbler portion of our design will be on the top. So I've stacked like this styrofoam thing and a jewel flipper case <laughs> on my desk. And I'm just gonna hold a white acrylic marker to that flat against what we've stacked here. I think this is about three and a quarter inches or so up from the bottom of the cup. And I used a white acrylic marker just so I can keep the line through the whole design and not lose sight of that line. Um, but it also won't be distracting if I forget to remove some of it. I'm gonna run a piece of half inch masking tape along that line. You can use electrical tape or whatever you want. And then I'm going to mask off the remainder of the bottom of my cup with some Widers painter tape. And that painter's tape will be there for the remainder of the design process with our epoxy. So you'll wanna make sure that you place that just under the tape line that is along the line of demarcation, I guess. I don't know, that white line that we created because you're gonna to have to replace the tape on that line very often so you don't wanna cover it up by all of this larger masking tape that's gonna stay for the remainder of the design process. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of sparkle to our vinyl using some epoxy. I'm using my Fast Cure Epoxy from Flynn Sisters Supply Shop today, and I've mixed about 20 milliliters of epoxy, and I've added in a very small amount of glitter. I'm using Ice Cream Dream today from Maestro Creations. I will link it down below along with a discount code. And you'll notice that we're kind of avoiding that tape line. We're gonna come right up against it and after I've got this fully coated and we have a nice spread of sparkle against that beautiful vinyl, I'm gonna let this roll for just a few minutes, wiping off any kind of excess from that yellow tape line. And then I'm gonna remove that tape right away. I'm not gonna risk walking away and forgetting about the tape. Also, I'm using a fast setting epoxy, so it's not going to travel too far down from where that tape line is. I let this roll on my turner for about an hour and a half, and at the three hour mark, we were ready to apply our decals. For our decal today, I'm using the super cute Babes Support Babes SVG that I got from Made by Manny and Mal. She has the cutest digitals. I will link them down in the description box along with a discount code. And we're just gonna layer this up by, 
eyeballing it. I'm using a really pretty pastel pink vinyl from Sicer's Pressure Sensitive Vinyl, and I'm layering that over Tech Wrap Craft Silver Holographic Vinyl. I created the offset in Cricut Design Space, and I sized this decal roughly around three and a half inches wide, I think. In hindsight, I wish it would have made it a little smaller because <laughs> it's a little hard to read from the front looking straight at the cup, uh, but that's okay. After we've got the offset layer layered up with the top layer, I'm going to put this face down on my desk and peel back the paper backing to loosen it. This will ensure that we have less drama when we go to transfer it onto the cup. I'm going to apply my decal like I always do using the hinge method. Remember to measure twice so you only have to cut once. And once we have our decal applied, I'm ready to reapply my tape along that bottom line there and start on what hopefully would be the final coat of epoxy. So for this one, I put electrical tape because it's much easier to remove and hold that tape line. And I removed the tape immediately after I applied my epoxy. I did use my Artist Cure formula for this final coat, and I let that dry for about eight hours before I came back to remove the blue tape, and it was around 10 hours before we were ready to start working on the rhinestone part of our design. Now that the top part with our epoxy is completely dry, we're ready to start on the fun part. I've already applied my first row of rhinestones to the very bottom, and I lined them up against the bottom of our vinyl there, and I applied them using liquid fusion adhesive in a 18 gauge syringe needle. You can apply your glue however you like. I just like to do it this way because I can get a really fine, neat line because we don't want any glue blooming up around our rhinestones, particularly down there at the bottom where it would be visible against that stainless steel. I forgot to record me putting the first load line of rhinestones on. I'm sorry. Once you get that first line of rhinestones down along the bottom, you want to let it fully dry before you move on to the rest because you're going to be pushing up and lining up every subsequent row against that first row moving forward. When you're placing the next row, each stone will fit between the spaces of the stones below it to create like an interlocking pattern almost. I've done a really in-depth tutorial on how to do the honeycomb pattern uh, with rhinestones, which I will link in the description box below. We'll give a much more detailed explanation on what we're doing here. But we're just continuing on placing a line of glue. Again, don't get your glue on there too thick as to not have it bloom around the stones and make things look messy. And you really want to make sure that that first row is super duper straight and that you're pushing every subsequent row is close down to the next row as possible so everything stays nice and lined up. Sometimes I even use like a little square acrylic blank to kind of like push down my stones. Some people use like the honeycomb sleeves to try and push them down and keep them straight. Uh, but as long as you keep everything nice and straight lined up from the beginning and use that as your guide to push against all the next rows, it should come out pretty nicely. Of course, you could do this in a scatter pattern too if you wanted to use a bunch of different size stones like one of our scatter mixes to do this. I just thought it looked nice and clean. I also like the look of the transparent stones over this pastel rainbow vinyl. Super pretty seeing it shine through those rhinestones. I just continued on. It took me a couple hours, <laughs> I think. Definitely one of the quickest rhinestone projects I've done. I'm using the Bling Queen 2 uh, hand turner from the Bowen, which helps keep things nice and at level for me. And I can just move along very quickly, turning the cup as I go, going row by row. Once I got to the very end, I realized that I didn't have room for another row of SS20s. That row was just too narrow for me to fit those. So instead, I did a row of SS16s, still kind of fitting them into each space between each stone uh, in the following row. I wanted to start from the bottom 
along that vinyl line rather than the very top along the epoxy line because it's almost impossible to get that epoxy line perfectly straight like we need for a honeycomb pattern like this. Uh, but this is how it turned out. I absolutely love it. I let it dry for a couple days before we washed it up and shined up those stones. What do you guys think? Let me know if you want to try this. I thought it was a super fun and easy project. If you liked my video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every week. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.